As we told you just a few minutes ago, the president's campaign team wants Omarosa to pay millions for calling the president a racist. While the president himself unleashed an attack on Twitter, calling the former White House aide a dog. And as you might imagine, that is causing even more uproar tonight. Correspondent Kevin Cork is here to sort, of, sort it all out for us right here outside the West Wing. Good evening, Kevin. Evening, Brett. Today, the White House press secretary, Sarah Sanders, said she couldn't guarantee the president never uttered the N word. Although, to be fair, it's never been proven on tape that he's ever done such a thing. But that hasn't stopped former White House aide Omarosa from making such an explosive claim and others. But today, the Trump campaign began to fight back. After a seemingly endless string of appearances on national television promoting her new book, Unhinged, Omarosa showed no signs of letting up in her criticism of the president, including a searing retort of his tweet today in which he referred to her as a dog. If he would say that publicly, what else would he say about me privately? He has absolutely no respect for women, for African Americans. He is unfit to be in this office and to serve as the president. But today it was the Trump campaign's turn to hit back by pursuing an arbitration action against the former aide and alleging breach of contract, calling her Trump criticism a, quote, direct violation of an agreement, adding that it must be addressed and the violator must be held accountable. The action comes as Omarosa released yet another secretly recorded conversation, this time with Trump campaign officials who appear to be discussing what to do should a rumored tape of the president using the N-word actually exist. I'm trying to find out at least what context it was used in to help us maybe try to figure out a way to spin it. I said, well, sir, can you think of any time that this might have happened? And he said, no. Well, that's not you true. Know, Today, Amarosa doubled down. I wanted to have this type of documentation so that in the event I found myself in this position where, as you said, they're questioning my credibility. This tape proves that they discussed it at high levels of the Trump campaign. Last night, Trump campaign aide Katrina Pearson denied such a conversation ever took place, but today clarified her comments in a statement, saying those rumors were always being circulated by Omarosa and her alone, adding that I would placate Omarosa to move the discussion along because I was weary of her obsession over this alleged tape. Today, the White House defended its use of non-disclosure agreements, or NDAs, which strike at the very heart of what former staffers can and can't say after leaving. Despite contrary uh, opinion, it's actually very normal, and every administration prior to the Trump administration has had NDAs particularly specific for anyone that had a security clearance. I don't believe that I violated, but I'm going to leave that to the lawyers to sort that out. It's interesting that he's trying to silence me. So what is he trying to hide? Brett, among Omarosa's other claims today, she says she's been interviewed by special counsel Robert Mueller's team, although she did not go into specifics about what she may or may not have discussed in that interview. Furthermore, she says President Trump himself knew of the contents of the Clinton emails that were hacked during 2016 and posted by WikiLeaks before they were posted. Brett? Kevin Cork, thank you.